say exactly when humans' infatuation with flight began. For a species with no chance of flying on our own, we sure did become obsessed. In part one of this series, we looked at lighter than air flight, going up in a hot air balloon. We learned that lighter than air flight was the first successful type of manned flight. Gas and hot air balloons, blimps or dirigibles, all fly because the air or gas inside the structure is lighter than the air around it, so it rises. We also learned that without a motor or steering, a balloon is not a very reliable form of transportation. Going where the wind takes you is fun, but for human flight to really take off, we needed a way to get from point A to point B. We needed an airplane. After a lot of experimentation, the right combination of science and stubborn dedication led to the creation of powered flight. What really made powered flight possible was the development of the internal combustion engine. Contact. The invention of the combustion engine in the late 1870s allowed us to control the direction of our flight and actually get to a specific location. Powered flight relies on four main principles, lift, weight, thrust, and drag. An engine gave us thrust, or the power to push our plane forward. Wings gave us lift, the force we need to defy gravity. Apply our knowledge of aerodynamics to the speed we get from thrust, and science does the rest. So lift and thrust are key to power flight. How do these two forces get us off the ground? If you don't know, ask. That's right, we're going back to the lab. We're here today in our mobile lab to look at how wings get us up in the air. The air moving under a wing creates high pressure, and the air moving over a wing creates low pressure. This creates a vacuum that literally pulls the plane up. It creates lift. If you stick your hand out the window of a moving car, you can feel how the air moves over and under your hand. Pivot your hand up or down, and you can feel the airflow change. This is called pitch, or angle of attack. Change your angle of attack, and you can rise up, or dive down. So now we know that air flowing over a wing or airfoil creates lift. But we still need to be moving fast enough to get us off the ground. Let's put the power in power flight. In an airplane, the engine is what provides thrust. The internal combustion engine changed transportation forever. Automobiles, airplanes, helicopters, trains, and ships are just a few examples of how we use engines to move us around the world. We are taking a ride with our friend Bill Worth to learn how propellers create thrust. The propeller on the engine is really a number of airfoils, or smaller wings, that move in a circle, pushing the air behind it to propel the plane forward. Create thrust, create lift, and we fly. As long as you keep moving fast enough, you'll stay up in the air. So let's look at how we actually steer this thing. We're here in Dallas, Texas to find out more about how a plane flies. Bo Calibus is a friend and pilot who flies aerobatics. He was kind enough to help us with our travel parkour lesson. through the sky. Pilots use a stick or yoke to do this. When a pilot moves the stick left or right, the plane reacts accordingly. This happens by changing the roll. To move up and down, you pull back or push forward to change your pitch. Foot pedals control the rudder, providing stability in the side-to-side -side motion called yaw. Pilots
pilots put all this knowledge and skill together to fly through the air and guide the plane safely down. Thanks, Bo. So now we know, we fly by creating lift, the force that keeps us up in the air. We know that heavier than air flight needs to have enough lift to weight ratio to get off the ground. Since the same conditions apply no matter how big the plane, with enough power you can put really big things up in the air. As with most things, there are limits. With propeller engines, there are two main ones, speed and weight. There is a point where the engine needed to produce enough thrust to get a really big plane up in the air. Gets to be so heavy, they couldn't fly. Propeller planes also get very hard to handle as they approach the speed of sound. So you can't go as fast as you want. These are the two main things that drove the development of the jet engine. Let's take a look at jets. The idea behind jet technology has been around since the early 1900s, but true jet flight wasn't achieved till the 1930s, beginning a new phase in powered flight. It can get pretty complex, but here are the basics on jet engines. <laughs> They're more powerful. Jet engines burn gas in open chambers, creating heat. This heat drives a turbine. The turbine produces thrust by pushing hot air through the engine casing and out the back. Increased thrust equals increased speed. They can fly higher. At high altitudes, propellers struggle to move through thinner air. Jet engines don't have this problem. They move even thin air through the engine, creating thrust. So whether it's a jet or propeller airplane, powered flight uses lift and thrust to fly. Once again, science wins. In the span of a hundred years, mankind went from this, to this, to this. The world suddenly became a much smaller place. We could literally be anywhere in a day. Moving between continents, across oceans, powered flight changed the world. If you like what you see, remember to like, subscribe, and follow us on Instagram. There's more to come. My ride's here. Gotta fly. Sit out on the front porch, gaze up, and swoon. And know a hearty laugh. Gravity holds up. There's some scenery, there's plenty to explore, but still there's plenty more.